Hi, my name is Tim Grabert. I'm a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, and I direct the heme malignancy program at Mass General Hospital. I spend most of my time doing laboratory research, especially on MDS, um, but also uh, do some inpatient attending on our leukemia service, and then have this administrative role of directing the heme malignancy program. I have the privilege of moderating a panel you know, in celebration of the 40th anniversary of the AAMDS uh, International Foundation. And the title of our panel is Future Priorities in Research. And so I, I was very fortunate to recruit several distinguished uh, members of this panel. They include Dr. Gail Robos, who's a professor of medicine uh, at Weill Cornell College and a real thought leader in clinical research in MDS. Uh, and other myeloid malignancies. Uh, Ayala Tarr, who was a colleague of mine at Mass General, he has a history of being both a clinician and a researcher in MDS, but has made an interesting transition to work in industry uh, at several different companies. Now he's at uh, Vorbio, working on cell therapy approaches uh, for blood cancers. And then the third panelist is a colleague of, of Dr. Tarr's, Darren Johnson, who is a, also an employee at Vorbio and a, and a, uh, a public uh, uh, relations expert. Uh, he was diagnosed with MDS uh, more than 20 years ago uh, and went through treatment, including a stem cell transplant and has been remission for many, many years. And so he has a very interesting perspective. And then the final member is Professor Torsten Hofferlock, uh, who uh, is one of the co-founders of the Munich Leukemia Laboratory. Dr. Hofferlock, again, has been in the past a clinician in academic environments at various centers in Germany, but with colleagues co-founded the MLL or the Munich Leukemia Lab, uh, which is one of the largest centers in the world, uh, providing diagnostics, advanced molecular diagnostics for MDS, and also conducting research. We have a really distinguished and diverse panel of experts to talk about the future priorities of research. There have been incredible advances in both basic research and clinical research in MDS over the past 40 years. Um, I'm old enough to have not necessarily participated, but at least witnessed most of that. Uh, I've been in this field for about 30 years now. Um, I'd say on the laboratory side, MDS was a pretty murky disease. Our understanding was very limited. When I went to medical school and I saved the syllabus, the core syllabus for my hematology block, which happened in the second year when I was a medical student in 1985, just two years after the founding of the foundation. And I went through that syllabus, 300 pages, and there was no mention of MDS. We weren't using that term yet. Uh, we talked about things like um, refractory anemia and so forth, but we had essentially no basic scientific understanding of this disease. So everything we know about MDS, basically, we've learned in the interim. Um, so laboratory research has really um, you know, expanded dramatically. I'd say the, the single most um, you know, influential tool there has been our ability to do uh, broad sequencing, DNA and RNA sequencing of genomes from patients with MDS. And that has really unlocked for us um, a genetic understanding of, of this disease. It's still not complete. Um, there's still some gaps we need to fill in to understand the genetic, both the mutations or changes in genes that occurred during aging and the, and the mutations that we're born with. We now know that there's an inherited component, predisposition to MDS in some patients, and we don't have a genetic explanation for all of those. So gene sequencing, I think, has been the single most powerful tool, just to point to one that has really accelerated basic research in MDS. Similarly, we've made great strides in, in clinical research in MDS. Uh, we've had a number of drugs approved for treatment of patients with MDS. I think all of us would agree that we're nowhere near where we want to be. We're not curing our patients or curing many of our patients. We want patients to live longer and live better. Um, so that involves more drug dis discovery, advances in cellular therapy. Um, so there's a lot of work still. There's a, a lag in, in all fields, particularly in 
an oncology between understanding the basic biology and then being able to do something about it, being, being able to develop a therapy. But again, I think these things are coming together now. We have a much better understanding of the basic biology. There are lots of agents that are being developed uh, that can be tested. And I think we'll see advances in treatment of MDS in the, in the future as well. You know, as a, as a member of the Medical Advisory Board of the AAMDSIF, uh, I've had the privilege of reviewing grant applications um, several times now for the foundation. Uh, these applications are submitted every year from investigators around the world um, to fund both basic translational and clinical investigation in MDS, in aplastic anemia, and PNAH. Um, and that's always a fun exercise because we get fantastic applications from talented people. I wish that we could fund more than we do, um, um, but you know, we, with limited resources, we try to um, use our best judgment to pick the projects that we think have the most promise. Um, I think it's these grants <clears throat> have particularly benefited investigators at, their, at the beginning of their careers. And certainly personally, that's what I have prioritized, is to really find the promising rising stars early in their career, where a grant of the size can make a difference. Um, and so uh, to me, that's one of the most important things that AAMDSIF does is, is fund these research proposals. And I'm uh, pleased to be a part of that committee. I think there are a number of promising areas of research uh, ongoing right now that are going to play out over the next few years uh, and we'll see benefits for, for our patients. Just to mention a couple, you know, we have a growing appreciation now of the role of inflammation. We've previously been pretty focused on the MDS cells themselves and intrinsic problems with them. I mentioned gene sequencing and looking for mutations. That's an example of that type of research. But that ignores the environment that these cells are growing in, the microenvironment. And included there are immune cells that secrete factors that you know, affect the, both the normal and the, and the abnormal cells in the, in the bone marrow microenvironment. So uh, I've been sort of watching that from the sidelines for several years. Uh, that's not an area of research that I do, but uh, it can't be ignored anymore. And there's a, a growing momentum and really elegant research going on looking at the role of specific factors in the microenvironment uh, that impact hematopoiesis. Um, and so I think that that will lead to therapies that improve blood counts, for example, perhaps delay the progression of MDS or aplastic anemia to more advanced diseases like AML. So I'm particularly keen, as, as many in the field are, about the role of inflammation. The other area that's, again, very popular uh, for good reason is the idea of identifying precursor states that lead to MDS, trying to, trying to identify people at risk before they're actually diagnosed with MDS, um, and ultimately try to intervene to see if we can prevent the progression of MDS. So studying this entity of clonal hematopoiesis, again, understanding it at a basic molecular level uh, and then thinking about strategies to try to intervene and, and eradicate clonal hematopoiesis uh, or prevent the progression of MDS. This is a very active area of research, and I think we're going to see fruits of that coming in the next in the next few years. I got interested in this area of medicine um, during that hematology block that I mentioned earlier when I was a medical student. I was just fascinated by um, everything about it, you know, it, it's, again, it was at the dawn of our understanding of these diseases, but it just seemed um, so interesting. So as a medical student, it was first that intellectual piece, wow, this seems really interesting, there's a lot to learn and there's smart people working on that, I, I want to do that too. But then it became, you know, my career once I was finished my training was I actually taking care of patients. and. You know, I just love working with this patient population. Um, many patients like the fact that I wear these two hats, that I'll 
be a, an attending for them for some period of time when they're in the hospital and I go back to the laboratory and work on research. So they're very excited to hear that there's research in this area uh, and they want to hear what's going on in the lab, what are you working on. And, and the other side of the coin is true too. I have postdocs, postdoctoral research associates in the lab who are not medically trained, who never do anything in the hospital. And every time I come back from working in the hospital, they want to hear what's going on, how are the patients doing, you know, it, it's motivating for everybody. So um, I really got into the field initially because of curiosity and interest in the, in the intellectual parts, but it, then it became, you know, my life and there was the emotional connection to patients. In addition to um, um, progress in our understanding of the basic biology of MDS, uh, over the last 40 years, we've made uh, tremendous advances in clinical research in MDS as well. You know, we've seen a number of drugs approved that are helping our patients, but I think it's fair to say that none of us are happy or satisfied with the progress that we've made so far. We still have a long way to go. We want our patients to live long, healthy lives and feel better. Um, and so um, there's definitely a great need for both basic research and, and clinical research in these diseases. We need not incremental progress. We need, we really need to move the needle in significant ways and think outside the box. So we need some bold, bold new ideas. So I hope we hear some of them uh, at my panel and I hope people are listening. The funders who give us money to do this research, the regulators who help us approve drugs and other colleagues who might be inspired to, to work on these problems.